Hi there, Chris, Chapman the Camp, Moto Legends. Today we're going to be talking about a new suit from the German brand Held. It's not a totally new suit, but it is new to us. It's a leather suited two piece touring suit, very plain, very simple, all black. The suit is called, in the top half, it is called the Cosmo 3, the lower half is called the Avolo 3. So this is the upper half of the suit, the Cosmo and Avolo. This is the Cosmo 3 leather jacket. A lot of people think that we here at Moto Legends don't really like leather. And that's because in a lot of our written material and some of our reviews, we often talk about the limitations of leather. We talk about the fact that leather's not fantastic when it's really hot because it doesn't breathe. So what happens is when we get hot, we're trying to sweat, the sweat comes to the surface of the skin, it needs to turn into a vapour form so that that sweat can escape, drawing heat out of the body. That can't happen when the outer garment is not breathable. So in really hot weather when you've got a leather jacket, you just get wet in the inside. You don't cool down, you just get hot and wet. Leather's also, for a very similar reason, not fantastic when it's really cold. So let's say you're riding around in this jacket and you've got a layer underneath, you're still sweating, you're still getting hot underneath. But that cannot escape, the sweat cannot escape. So what happens is, again, you're gonna create this layer of moisture in and around your base layer. The problem when it's cold is that that creates a wet medium through which heat can be conducted away from the body far faster than is the case in a dry medium. So again, a leather jacket, when it's really cold, it's just gonna aid you becoming even colder. Of course, the real weakness of leather is in the rain. Imagine a chamois leather, a new chamois leather, you drop it into a bucket of hot water, it softens up, it soaks that water in. That's in essence what happens with a leather jacket if you're riding in the rain. It's dry, it's just gonna soak all the moisture in. It becomes very uncomfortable after a while. It's also going to make you colder with the wind chill effect and the water that's being held by the garment, that can make you feel particularly cold. So, leather, is not fantastic and when it's really hot, it's not fantastic when it's really cold, and it's not fantastic when it's wet. But in certain conditions and in certain rides, there is nothing better than riding in leather. I first bought a leather suit about 30 years ago from Frontiers in Wimbledon. I had just acquired for myself a Ducati 888. I had sold the bike that I'd learned to ride on, swapped it for a Ducati 888, Looking back at it now, that just seems ridiculous and crazy. I don't know how I managed to survive, but it was just, it was very fashionable back then to buy a Ducati. So I went out and got myself a Ducati. I needed a leather suit, I felt. So I went to Frontiers. I got myself the plainest black leather suit. I didn't want anything with numbers on. I didn't want anything very colorful. I didn't want a hump. I didn't want sliders. I still wear that suit today. It is fantastic. It is so comfortable. Over the years, it's become ever more comfortable. I feel very secure in it when I'm riding. So there are some rides that I do where that will be my go-to outfit. But it has to be acknowledged that the plain black two-piece leather suit is a little bit out of fashion. We do do a couple from Halvarsons, but you don't see many of them. And we are always on the lookout for a good two-piece leather suit. We started working with Held recently. We've taken on three new styles for 2021, and this is one of them. And we saw it, we saw the pictures of it, and we thought that's exactly what we're looking for. It's plain like the Dionysia. It doesn't have humps, it doesn't have sliders on the knees and so on, but it certainly has a lot more bells and whistles on than my Dionysia did all of those years ago. So let's just talk through it a little bit. The cowhide is incredibly soft. Now, Truth be told, I've never stood up here with a leather jacket that we're offering going, that leather, it's a bit hard and stiff. So we always talk about soft cowhide, but this is particularly soft. It's just lovely. I've not come across a leather jacket that feels nicer or softer than this. The leather has a treatment to the surface that's called TFL Cool. Now, having explained that leather's not great in the heat because you get hot and the sweat can't escape, the TFL Cool treatment reflects the sun's ultraviolet rays. So that will just serve to keep the jacket cooler than it might be or might have become if we didn't have such a treatment. So it's gonna allow you to ride in higher temperatures without getting sweaty and wet and so on. 
terms of comfort, we've got stretch here. We've got accordion stretch at the back of the shoulders and also in the elbows. So whilst it's a very soft and comfortable leather, all these things help make the jacket even more comfortable to ride in. The jacket has a mesh lining. Again, I go back to the thing about riding in leather when it's hot. A lot of leather jacket manufacturers line their jackets with a cotton or a satin lining. That does not help. So even though leather will never be the most breathable fabric on a motorcycle garment, by putting a mesh lining in, you make it certainly more breathable. You have a thermal waistcoat inside. Again, you're not gonna wear a jacket like this or a suit like this when it's super, super cold. And the thermal waistcoat is not of the very highest quality, but on a chilly day, let's say you go out early in the morning, you're coming home in the evening, it will just add a little bit of warmth. So it's worth having. In terms of ventilation, because Held have gone to great lengths to make this jacket as wearable as it can possibly be in hot weather. Let me talk you through them. We've got vents here, these upper pockets. They are pockets, but when you pull them open, you can see that this is mesh venting here. So I don't know how much air that's gonna get in, depends on your riding position and so on, but providing you've not got anything in your pockets, if you lent forward on the bike, you undo those, you are gonna get a bit of air through them. We've got vents here, incoming vents on the front of the sleeves and then exhaust vents on the back of the jacket. We have a very clever feature here that we've seen increasingly on both textile and leather jackets. So we undo this flap, very nice by the way, that's magnetic. We can then undo the main zip. All zips by the way are YKK, always the mark of a quality garment. And we have in here a zipped perforated placket. So you can ride perfectly well like this, it's perfectly safe, but again, if you just want a little bit more air in, that's what you do, you open this up, that's gonna then bring a lot of air into the jacket. We also have small areas of perforation here on the arm, we've got a little bit here, and we've got an area of perforation that runs across the shoulders at the back. So, my point has not changed, I still don't think leather is something you wanna wear in the very hottest conditions, but Held have gone to great lengths to make this as bearable as it possibly could be when you're wearing leather. In terms of pockets, we've got four external pockets, two slash ones here, the two top ones, which I've mentioned already, are both vents and pockets. Here on the hips, we've got an adjuster, a leather strap with two poppers that's gonna enable you, they're gonna enable you to adjust the volume a little bit. At the ends of the sleeves, we've got a zip and a gusset, and also a strap to cinch the end of the cuff in. We are pretty obsessive about the need to put your gloves inside in a waterproof jacket, because it's only when you do that that you can stop the rain running into the hand. We don't feel quite as strongly when it comes to leather, but it's nice if you've got a slightly thicker glove, it's nice that you can do that with this jacket if that's the way you want to ride it in the summer. We've got some reflective material on the jacket. You can't see it here, obviously, because it's daylight, but these bands here, that's reflective material, and it's reflective here. So even though you're wearing a plain black suit at night, those areas are gonna glow up and you will be seen, hopefully, by other traffic. The jacket and the pant clearly zip together. If you wanted to wear this jacket with a pair of jeans, what we can do is we can come up with a connector easily done, I think it's a cost of 20 or 30 pounds, I can't remember exactly, but we can create a connector that will enable you to connect this jacket to the Halvarsen's waist zip. Now the Halvarsen's waist zip is really clever, it goes in and out of your belt loops, you use your belt to go in and out of your belt loops, you can secure it around your jeans, and then you can connect a jacket to a pair of jeans. So if that's the way you want to ride, and this would be a lovely jacket to wear with a pair of jeans, then you come to us, we'll do a connector, easily done. In terms of armor, we've got CE armor, obviously it's CE armor, in the shoulders and the elbows. I don't think it's particularly nice armor, it does its job, I'm not questioning its protective capabilities, but it's not the softest, nicest armor. And I think what we would be doing, if we had a choice with this jacket, we would be swapping the armor over to say, the Ghost D3O armor, this is level one, so the Ghost would give you the same level of protection, but in a much thinner, much more comfortable form or you could upgrade, you could go level two. The armor that is actually in here is already Sastec, but it's slightly old fashioned armor. If we went to the new Sastec level two Phantom armor, which is almost identical to Ghost, but at a higher level, level two, then you could actually increase the levels of safety and, and increase the levels of comfort by putting that in the shoulders and the elbows. 
In the back, there's a pocket for a back protector. It does not come as standard, but it will take perfectly a Viper. I think in most jackets, it's a size nine Viper. So that's certainly the way that we would be going. One of the other things that we're finding is quite remarkable with Held's gear, and we've not worked with them for long. We did some boots and gloves last year, 2020, but we're only this year starting to do some clothing, is the range of sizes that their gear is available in. Now, have to be a little bit circumspect because we're recording this in March 2021. The shops haven't opened, so we need to get this actually on some real bodies, on some clients to see how it actually works. But the size range that is offered by Held on a lot of their gear and on this suit is pretty amazing. This jacket goes from a size 46, which frankly is quite diminutive, all the way up to 70, which is a 55 inch chest. That's pretty huge, but that's not it. This suit also comes in a slim fit and a tummy fit. So if you are incredibly thin and you want something that's going to be a little bit more hip hugging, there is a slim size. And then if you're someone who's got a little bit of a tummy, you'd go for the tummy size. So we think that's amazing. I have a feeling that this suit is going to be one that we can fit in onto almost anybody. I've already mentioned that I think the Cosmo jacket would work really well worn over a pair of jeans, but clearly it was designed to go with its own matching pant. This is that matching pant. This is the Avolo 3 leather trouser. In terms of philosophy, construction components, the trousers very much mirror the jacket. So you get the same super soft leather. You get the same TFL cool tre treatment that's going to reflect the sun's ultraviolet rays to keep you a little bit cooler. You've got the same mesh lining, again, for breathability. You've got here reflectors, in this case, just above the knees. So lots in common. The trousers and the jacket very much match. In terms of some of the other details, we've got these two upper zip pockets here with YKK zips. Here on the knees, we've got concertina stretch. Really useful when you're sat on the bike, you don't want the trouser to be pulling anywhere. So as you sit on the bike, that's gonna open up. It's just gonna make sitting down on the bike a little bit more comfortable. You've also got the same concertina stretch in the upper part of the waistband. That comes into play particularly when you have zipped in the trousers to the jacket because then when you lean forward on the bike there can be a tendency if there's no stretch there for either the jacket to hoist the trousers up or for the trousers to pull the jacket down. When you've got concertina stretch in the waistband it opens up again just makes it a little bit more comfortable. We've also got again with the same aim in mind with comfort and wearability we've got stretch cordura panels behind the knees. I don't know whether technically it's stretch cordura but it feels like that, it's doing the same job. So you've still got abrasion resistance, but again, it's just gonna make the trousers easier to articulate in. You've got also the same kind of material up into the crotch. Bottom of the trouser, you've got these long zips that come almost up to the knee. They're going to enable you to accommodate pretty much any kind of boots, a touring or commuting boot. I would suggest that you're not gonna to try to wear an off-road boot under a pant like this, and I'm not sure that they would go anyway. Up here on the waist, we've got a couple of elasticated Velcro adjusters. That's gonna allow you to cinch the trouser in or loosen it as you see fit. We've also got on the waist some brace buttons here and here. We are lovers of riding it with, with braces. A lot of people don't like braces because they think it makes them look like an old man, but I suppose my suggestion would be, or our suggestion would be, get over yourself. It's just a more comfortable way of riding. It means that the trouser is always going to be held at the right height, as it were. Particularly important if you're riding somewhere, you arrive at your destination, you're zipped in, you undo the jacket, you take the jacket off, you don't want your trousers falling down. So if you've got braces, then the trousers are always going to be held in place. In terms of protection, we've got CE armour in the knees, it's level one protection. I think our recommendation would be the same as it was with the jacket. It's not the nicest armor, it's perfectly good armor, it does the job, but it's not of the very latest form as it were. So you could, for the same level, you could go to the D3O Ghost armor, get much more comfort for the same level of protection, or you could go up to the Sastec level two Phantom armor, which is almost as thin, pretty much as comfortable as the Ghost, but you'd be trading up to level two. No hip protectors in these trousers. I'm gonna come back to that because that's an issue of some significance. At the back, there's a pocket for a coccyx protector. The other thing I would say about these pants, rather like I was talking about with the jacket, is they come in a huge array of sizes. They go up 
to a size 54 waist, and that's pretty huge. But whereas the jacket came in a regular, a slim and a tummy, the pants come in a regular, a stocky, a slim and a tummy. So actually in four configurations, and that's a pretty huge. Now, we have not had great experience with fitting these trousers, so we don't know quite how they're gonna work on, on people. It's a little bit confusing because the difference between stocky and tummy you need to really work at it. We have that information here. If you're unsure, you can phone us, we'll talk you through it. We can give you your measurements so you can go away and measure yourself and find out what's gonna work for you. Obviously, if you come in, it's gonna be easier because we can do that here. But we are not going to always be carrying all these sizes because frankly, that's just too many sizes. It would just take up, we're not gonna sell a lot of size 54 waist. We can't have 54 in tummy, slim and stocky. It just wouldn't make sense. But this year, 2021, held are keeping all of their stock in the UK. Previously, it was in Germany and getting the stuff across was a bit of a pain. But now, if you come to see us and we don't have the size you want, we can normally get that size, we're imagining, within 24 to 48 hours. In summary, with this suit, if you want to ride in leather, I think this is going to be a fabulous suit, provided you don't have a sports bike and you don't want the hump and the knee sliders and so on. Somebody who just wants to ride and go touring in a leather suit or go out at weekends in a leather suit, I think this is gonna be as nice a leather suit as you will find. And if you're going out on a summer weekend where it's not too hot and you don't think it's gonna rain, this will be completely up to the job. I think personally, I would feel happy going on a continental, on a continental tour in this suit. Might not wanna go down to Spain or Italy, but if I had a tour around the northern part of Europe, I think climatically it would be fine. I think the only thing that I would do to make sure that I had things covered, I'd probably take with me a set of Scott waterproofs. Last year, 2020, there was no international motorcycle trade fair. Normally a company like us would go to, there are two shows, it's either ECMA in Italy or Intermot in Germany, and look at the new ranges for the coming season, but that didn't happen because of COVID. We had started working with Held last year, doing a few boots and pairs of gloves. We decided that we liked what we saw and we'd wanted, we wanted to do a few more bits in 2021. So we asked them to send our catalogue. They sent the catalogue over. We chose, I think, just three suits. This was one of them. They sent the suit over. We tried it on. We've not actually ridden in it, but we sat on the shop by. But a number of us here have tried the suit on. We thought it was exactly what we wanted. We decided to range it, as it were. We began writing the spec for the website and various email bulletins and so on. And as we were doing that, we noticed that the trouser did not have any hip protectors. And we thought perhaps Held had made a mistake. And we've seen this with other manufacturers. You cannot be an AA rated trouser unless you have supplied the hip armor. So we wrote to them and said, you've not supplied the hip armor. And they came back and said, actually, the trouser is only A rated. That confused us even more because it's almost unheard of for a leather trouser to be A-rated. Now, under EN17092, there are three classifications. There's A, which is for urban riding. There's AA, which encompasses most of the gear that one is gonna buy. And then there's AAA for kind of racing gear, super thick leather racing jackets and so on. And we would very much have expected this suit, the jacket and the pants to come in at the AA level. But they came back and they explained to us why this is an A-rated suit. And I'm going to pass that on now. In essence, it's got to do with the costs involved in having your gear accredited under EN 17092. The regulations came out a couple of years ago and everyone was in a bit of a rush to get their gear done because legally you could not put, after a certain date, you could not put your gear on sale unless it had the right labels in it. But the costs were huge. The costs were about, and I'm not an expert on this and it might've changed since I last did this research, but the costs were about 3,000 pounds, 3,000 euros to test every garment. So in this case, testing the jacket, testing the pants. If you had a suit that came in three colors, then you would have to test individually for each color because the dyes that are used either in the leather or the textile, that could have a, an effect on the abrasion resistance or the tear strength of the fabric. So you had to test those colors as well at the same cost. It became a huge financial burden. And in fact, EM17092 sent a number of manufacturers pretty much to the wall. It was a huge expense. And with a company like Held, Held is a very large and significant company, a well-off company, but they produce an absolutely huge range. 
they must have a range that's as big as almost anyone in the motorcycle industry. And they took the view that because of the timing pressures, they just needed to test everything to the A level just to make it legally saleable. The rationale is very simple because if they had shot for the skies and gone to try to get the maximum rating they could, if you fail on one of those levels, you have to test for the next level down. And then if it fails at that level, you test the next level down. So it's not an arrangement whereby you have all the gear tested and they go, right, you're a triple A or a double A. You go for triple A. If you fail, you have to do double A. If you fail to double A, you have to do A. So Held didn't have the time, and I'm not sure that they relished spending the money on going for the higher levels. They just thought, let's get it all done at the A level. It's not an unknown strategy to us because in fact, Bell staff here in the UK did exactly the same. And even Roka in Switzerland did the same. They just needed to get their stuff out because you could not sell. The legislation said that you could not sell stuff into retailers and through shops until it had the right label. So that was the reason that held I've only got an A rating on this. In fact, everything they did initially was just an A rating. Since then, new items that have come into the range have been retested at the higher level. So we reviewed the other day a, an off-road suit called the Crazy Evo. Nowhere near as protective a suit as this, but that came in at AA. But Hell would have taken the decision that they're not gonna test everything again. Stuff that's in the range that's going to come to maybe the end of its life cycle in a couple of years, they're not going to retest, they're just going to live with it. They may have lots of stock of it and so on, but they are only going to retest or rather test to the higher standard new items as they come into the range. So this is a single A rated outfit and it won't, it won't change. But I have to assure you that this is a very safe and protective garment. And if you are someone who's prepared to ride around in a top of the range Helvarsons, a top of the range Rucker, a Klim, this suit is every bit as protective. There's no way that a leather suit is going to be less abrasion resistant than a textile suit. So if you're one of those guys who will only be guided by the specs, I had someone on our YouTube channel the other day going, I only ride in AAA, I won't go anywhere unless I'm in AAA. I think that's missing the point a little bit, but if that's the way you are, just don't go for this suit. You're gonna miss out on it because it's a fabulous suit. It's a beautiful and comfortable suit. But if that's the way you are, so be it. But I'm, I have no qualms about suggesting that this is a very protective suit. You just need to get over the fact that technically it's rated A. So that was the held leather suit, the top half, the Cosmo 3, the bottom half, the Volo 3. In terms of price, the jacket is 425, the pants are 395, so we reckon just over 800 pounds for a suit of that quality. That's not bad. If you'd like to see more leather gear or perhaps more held gear, then visit the website motolegends.com. If you'd like to learn more about these two pieces, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you to a dedicated page with the items on. There you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail, you can check out availability, and obviously if you really like, Either, either parts, the top or the bottom half, you can buy that there and then. Now, when you buy from us, we try to make the process simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed, or rather was rightly famed for their never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find any retailer selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their landed price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call the price beat, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. In the future, if you'd like to receive email bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business, in future you'll receive our email bulletins. If however you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in this form, we would be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now this is 2021. In 2020, we gave away to a YouTube subscriber a Mutt 125cc motorbike. We had messed about with it, we'd customized it a little bit to look like a Steve McQueen desert sled. This year we've gone a little bit up market. We are giving away this year, and we're gonna be giving it away just before Christmas this year. We are giving away a 250cc Fantix Scrambler 
Caballero, Caballero Scrambler rather. It is a gorgeous little bike, but we are not giving it away this year to a YouTube subscriber. We're giving it away to somebody who follows us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning that bike, go over to Facebook and obviously follow us. I'd like to end with a little play for our shop here at Moto Legends. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. It's a fabulous shop, but it's a small shop. It's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds arranged over three floors. And that technically makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Ely coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.